All right, we're back in the Maker Lab at Micro Center, and today we're talking 3D scanning. We're gonna be using the Creality Ferret Pro Scanner. Are you ready to get started? Awesome, let's go. 3D scanning has been around for a long, long time. In terms of the consumer grade level of 3D scanning, I can go back to the year around 2015, where a piece of software called Sconnect came out. What was cool about Sconnect is that it ran on your PC and allowed you to hook up a Xbox 360 Connect module to it and scan. Now this was awesome at the time because the Xbox 360 Connect modules were ever present. You most likely had one if you own an Xbox 360. Now what you could do is get the software on your laptop or your PC, connect the extra long cable on the Connect to the software and then scan with it but we've come a long way since then. One of the biggest drawbacks back then in terms of capturing 3D scans was that you had to be tethered. We'll talk about the Creality Ferret Pro today and how you no longer need to be tethered to a computer. But first, let's talk a little bit about what happens when you start a 3D scan. When you're doing a 3D scan, what you're relying on a lot is pictures and distance data. And the way you're gonna get that distance data is from different sensors in the camera or different sensors in the 3D scanner. Now, different scanners have different types of sensors, including LiDAR. This one focuses on infrared signals going out and coming back, kind of like um, echolocation that a dolphin has, right? Um, and a, a very nice 24 million color camera that it has as well. So capturing all of that, the software is then able to take it and mold it into that object. Now, what it's capturing when it's doing the little bits and bobs of IR are what are called points. And then eventually you get what's called a point cloud. The point cloud is what allows the software to then mesh or optimize and mesh the model to something that a 3D printer can handle. Once you do that meshing though, it may not be completely full. You may have missed some spots. So a lot of the softwares out there have ways to make sure that the model is completely closed. If it's got a base, that that base is closed. And uh, the phrase that they use a lot of times is watertight. So you can import that to Bamboo Slicer or Prusa Slicer, let's say, and go ahead and click print. So we did a little movie magic and we went back in time before we assembled that so that we could show you what it's like to assemble the Ferret Pro. So first thing, we have this tripod base, and that is going to attach to the bottom of the battery handle. Inside this battery handle, there is probably an 18650 battery, um, LiPo battery, and it's rechargeable via the USB-C. But this will power not only the scanner, but the wireless bridge, which we'll see in a minute. All right, we are going to take the wireless bridge out and assemble that to the front by turning this screw here. We're good there. Now we're gonna take this small adapter up on here. This helps us angle the head, and we're gonna slide that in I think we're going to slide it in this way and it should click and on the front to release that there is a button right here so if you need to remove that afterwards and then finally we are going to add on the scanner part itself up here again another one of those slide in hot shoe style things with a snap button to release and we're going to tighten it a little bit just pointing down slightly now the Fair Pro comes with a whole host of cables, including a cable that you can connect directly to a computer with, but ultimately they are all USB-C at one end and they're gonna connect in here. So let's go ahead and get the cables we need for the mobile setup, which would be this USB-C to USB-A cable. So we're gonna go ahead and connect that in here. And then to make sure that it doesn't come out, they've included a screw here. Get that on good and tight and then we will send this through the wireless bridge. And then the other cable we need is to go from the wireless bridge down to the battery handle so that we can power the whole setup. So underneath the wireless bridge, we have, did I do this wrong? What we need to do is get either a longer USB cable or put it the way that it should have been. So let me go ahead and move these around. So I'm gonna unscrew and there we go. So the wireless bridge should be on the smaller wheel screw, and then the phone mount should be on the larger one. Now we can plug in that USB cable being so short as it is. And the way to turn it on is you press it once, and then to turn off, press twice. We can mount our phone. Sorry, I don't understand. Me neither. Be careful not to mount your phone right on the power button, or it will call emergency services after a while. 
Now we are ready to scan our first object. So let me get the app up on my phone and then we're gonna scan this little test owl. All right, so we've opened the Creality Scan app on our iPhone and we are going to connect. Once we've connected and we see a green link by going into our Wi-Fi and choosing the ferret network, we're gonna be able to do a new scan, but first we wanna check these settings. So on these settings, we're gonna choose small, we're gonna choose texture, we're gonna choose high quality, and we're gonna choose color. Once we've got that, let's go ahead and click new scan. Now, it does not come with a turntable, but if you can find a turntable like this, it makes the job way easier. We've got our owl moving already. We're gonna click a new scan, and we're gonna make sure that it's positioned as best as we can. And it will give us some feedbacks and points. So right now it says perfect hold on, which is great. And we're gonna leave exclude flat base enabled. Now we're gonna go ahead and click start, and it's going to do a countdown and we're going to just let it rotate one or two times. If it loses tracking, don't worry, let it go around once again. We can tell that it's not really getting the top of the owl. So there's ways that we can address that. So let's go ahead and pause this. We are going to remove one of these filament boxes. And in doing so, we now get a slightly different view. And when you're focusing the object, it's not directly center with the camera. As you would think, it's off to the left a little bit. We'll get you a much better image. So we're going to go ahead and hit start again, see if it can catch the tracking. And if it's not, you can tell because right now it's not even in that center spot. So let's get it back in that center spot and see if we're able to catch the tracking now. There it goes. Good. And see how we get most of that in that center rectangle. All right, let's see what we got. So we press pause. We're going to hit next. So it optimized our owl. That's actually really not bad. Now there are some holes and some gaping things that we could fix by doing more scans. However, what we're going to do right now is let the software do its best job. So make sure that hole filling is on and that closure is on. And because we want to 3D print this, we'll be doing an STL and then go ahead and hit next and it will start to work on the mesh. Now what it's doing, like we talked about before, is it's actually trying to make the model watertight. And by doing that, it's allowing us to print the model as a solid object and not have any kind of errors in the, the model itself. Now he's gonna add the color back in. So it's probably only useful if you're going to put this model into some sort of 3D uh, program, whether it's like loading it into the Oculus meta world or whatever. But um, if you want that 3D color data, it is there. You need to probably export it as an OBJ file by clicking share. Now we can export the model or the project either to other apps or to the computer. We're gonna go do the model and we'll be able to send it to ourselves via email. So Cam, would you kindly remove your glasses? It helps to not have any reflective surfaces uh, on the subject. And then we're gonna make sure that our settings down here are correct and we are gonna scan a face. You could also do body. We're gonna keep it on texture. We're gonna do high quality and we are going to do color mapping so that at the end we can actually see Cam in full color. We're gonna hide that and then we're gonna go ahead and hit new scan. And you can see that once we start to track him, you start to see a green model. So that's about where I need to be in order to capture his face. And you wanna do slow and steady movements. So let's go ahead and click start on the screen. And here we go. We're gonna to try to be smooth and steady. And it says, perfect, hold on. Okay, let's keep moving around. Now, Cam is blinking and that will show up in the scan, but we can do some things to fix that later. You can see how it's struggling a little bit to pick up his hair. And I do think that has to do a little bit with re reflectivity. Now it says lost tracking, so I'm gonna come back just a little bit. There's definitely an art to doing larger objects. I will say that. However, this is still pretty impressive and amazing. I'm gonna ask our wonderful cameraman, Kevin, to turn off the light that's right behind me here to see if that helps with the hair and reflecting, although it is capturing it. But let's see what happens when we turn the light off. Yeah, we're getting some good texture on the hair. I'm trying to keep keep him in focus here. Perfect, hold on. It's gonna be a good scan, I think. Let's try to fill in some of that space there. Move closer and it got it. It's not a bad idea to try to capture some of the shoulders as well, just because if you're going to do a traditional bust, you don't wanna cut it like right at the neck. So let me give myself a good flat plane. All right, I think we're gonna go ahead and press the pause button. Uh, we can spin it around and kind of see what we've got. We're gonna go ahead and hit next and let it start to process. But you can kind of start to see, you can kind of start to see what it captured. Uh, it's optimizing right now and eventually we'll have it clean up some of the file as well, do some meshing. 
being able to do this mobily without being tethered to a computer uh, is really awesome. And being able to see it very clearly on a phone in terms of what's going on uh, is super helpful. All right, so let's zoom in and see what we're looking at. Oh, he is a hollow person right now. You see we're missing a lot of stuff, but don't worry. We are going to select the options here. Make sure that hole filling is on, closure is on. And then the format that we want it to come out as uh, is STL so we can print it. So let's click on next and we'll work on meshing the model. All right, so it's gone ahead and it has optimized it and it has meshed it. It should have filled in the holes and closed it. So let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look at what it was able to do. So we see our friend Cam. The artifacts around the eyes are typically from when he blinks. Um, and that's going to happen. You can clean that up later. And then you can see where it filled in the hole. It's uh, quite angular. It's not awful. So that can be fixed with a program such as Mesh Mixer. I'm going to click Next, and it's going to do some color mapping as well. Now, this would most likely only be useful if you were going to use uh, the model in some 3D software. So if you were going to import this into your MetaQuest world or something like that. The only problem is when you do the color mapping, it sometimes hides imperfections in the mesh. So we don't see the angularity of the uh, pompadour there or the top of his hair. So now that we're done, it'll take us back to the main screen, at which point from here we can either delete, rename it, or what we really want to do is share it. Now this will open up a standard share dialog, and so you could send it any way you want, whether it's email. I'm going to go ahead and email it to myself. Right now it's packaging up the file. All right, it is sent. Now let's move on to the next part of the process. We're going to open that file. We're going to edit it a little bit, and then we're going to send it to the printer. We're going to open up an application called Mesh Mixer. This is a free application you can download from Autodesk, and we are going to import that file in here. All right, we're going to turn him around first, leave his chin up a little bit so that he can print without supports potentially. So I think that's good. And once again, I'm going to hit accept. Now I've got a nice flat base for Cam. We've got some issues over here that we need to take care of uh, due to some erroneous point cloud data. But let's go see if we can clean up that little bit of excess on his shoulder right there. We're going to take our brush size down. Sphere brush, what are our options? Sphere disc, unwrap brush. Let's try this guy and see what happens. We may accidentally grab some stuff below, and that's okay. We'll try to fix that. But this is working pretty well right now, actually. So let's see if we can clean that up and hit delete. Let's see if we can um, continue doing that and clean up some of these other little pieces here and there. So we need to go get the lasso tool now and draw around the stuff that we want to get rid of and delete, cleaned up that. Uh, what I'm going to do now, since it's mostly cleaned up, is I'm going to say make solid. So edit, make solid. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that uh, we're looking at the model as we go. Uh, we can do some different things here to change how we can do some different things here to, to see how accurate it can be. So let's try that and see what happens. Okay, so that in my mind made it worse. Let's take the solid actually the solid accuracy back down, see what happens. Ooh, even worse. So we don't want that. We probably want the mesh density way higher. Let's take that back down to around where it was. Let's see if we can get some of that detail back. Ooh, great. All right, so increasing the mesh density gave us a lot of our detail back. That's awesome. And it looks like it filled in those holes that we created. Since we're just doing this quickly, we're not gonna worry too, too much about this because there's a couple other things I wanna fix before I send it to print. First, we're gonna click accept. Always click accept. We are going to go into sculpt. We're gonna take a look at our different brushes and we will go with something like flatten. Let's see what flatten does if I start to kind of move around here. You can hold and drag. That kind of smooths some things out. Make sure to rotate as you're doing that to make sure you're not accidentally like pulling things way out of out of line. All right, here we're going to push this guy back in a little bit. You can kind of see how we can kind of get it to the point where some of that blends away. 
As we mentioned in the scan, you may have some issues with the eyes if your subject blinks. So let's go ahead and see if we can fix these eyes a little bit. We're gonna scan in and let's see what happens if we just use the flatten tool here. Not bad. We're losing the definition of the eye, but we're cleaning up that, that mess that it kind of created. And then I'm gonna hold shift to push some stuff back in. Okay, let's do that with the other eye. It's not great, but for the time, I think we're okay. So let's go ahead and clean that up. The other thing you could do is adjust different brushes. You have to be careful though, because if you go too crazy, you start to get the eye protruding. If we really, really wanted to, we could go to something like inflate, and then we could make the eye come out a little bit just to give it more character. Let's see what that would look like. Probably gonna be crazy. Oh, not bad. I mean, not good either, but you get the idea. You can start to sculpt and bring features back out. Again, this is, this is very much an artistic thing at this point. Oh, he's got some rough patches down here. So I'm going to go back to the flatten tool and clean that up. You can change the brush size, the intensity. When it captured the hair, it had difficult capturing up underneath. Um, so I'm going to go grab a tool that is going to allow me to um, kind of give it a little bit of texture on these more flat areas. So here we go. I'm going to use, let's try draw two. And without messing with any of these settings yet, let's see what happens if we hold it down and start to drag. And the longer I stay on a certain area, the longer it starts to pull that out. So we can do that. We can pull those kind of things out. But ultimately with this, I'm just trying to get it to look less geometric and more like there's organic material. So the better the scan you can get at the beginning, the less you have to do in this stage. We are going to go ahead and export this as an STL file and open Bamboo Studio so we can see what this is before we print it. Uh, we'll be doing this on the X1 in this case, although the one that you've seen printed was done on the FL Sun S1. And the fact that we have no other red notifications down here is great, meaning we did a lot of the cleanup we needed to do. All right, so we're all done. Let's head back to the Maker Lab and check out the mop. All right, so we've scanned our little owl and we've scanned our friend Cam and we have 3D printed his head. It's pretty impressive and we used the FL Sun S1 printer to do that. That made quick or quicker work of this. It was still about an 11 hour print, um, but we used PLA plus and it came out great. Um, there were some things we learned along the way, especially when it came to fixing the model afterwards. Where his hair was a little bit more angular, we were able to go into Mesh Mixer and clean that up. And where his eyelids were kind of wonky because he blinked a little bit during the scan, we were able to clean that up as well in the software. In the meantime, we've also scanned my head here and we've made them both hollow. Um, and in this case, we we're able to put like a lamp or something inside, or in the case of my head, we put a robotic arm inside so that he can move a little bit. Um, there's so many crazy fun things you can do with 3D scanning. Uh, just getting one uh, kind of removes the mystery of what can I do? You need to set your expectations. You're not gonna be making exact replicas of small parametric or geometric objects easily. Um, but it can get you really close. So we're really excited to see where 3D scanning goes in the next few years. It's come a long way so far. So make sure to stop into your local Micro Center and grab a Ferret Pro yourself and start 3D scanning things. And we'll see you next time in the Maker Lab at Micro Center.